Hi. So here we are. Day two. COVID Mageddon. Hashtag grounded. Um, this is kind of the first full day at home, sorta, because I had an appointment to run. It's uh, like 10 o'clock. It's almost 11 o'clock. I, so I haven't really started much work. I, I was able to do some work while I was where I was at. Um, so it's going to be an interesting week. This will, you know, kind of be the first real week of how are we going to work remote? What's it actually going to be like? Uh, how are we going to communicate? You know, we've had a couple of meetings, but I don't know. We'll see. I did some reading over the weekend about this uh, virus and, and what it could mean. And and a pretty in-depth study by, I want to say, the Imperial Science? Something like that in the UK. Does that sound right? Imperial? Could be. And a pretty in-depth study um, looking at a few different ways of, of dealing with it. One of them is do nothing, you know, and a lot of people die. Um, one of them is what they're calling mitigation, which is kind of what we're doing now, and a lot of people die. And then another one is called suppression, and a lot less people die. Uh, but we've got to do something. And in reading this whole thing, it was a really long article. I shared it with a number of people, probably a lot of you. Um, but what we've really got to do, it gets down to we have to slow down the rate of transmission. So, and get it below one is the number they have. So if, if I was to catch it and I transmit it to one person and that person transmits it to one, it's kind of slow. But right now we're at like a three, 2.8, something like that. So every person that gets it is transmitting it and, and getting it, they don't have to have symptoms, they just carry it, is transmitting it to like three people. And then each one of those three people is transmitting to three more people. So it's just going huge. And we have to slow that down. And a couple of reasons, one of the really important reasons we have to slow it down is every time it goes to a person, like if it goes to me, my body's gonna fight it uh, best as it can, but whatever survives and I transmit to the next person has already defeated or avoided my immune system. So it goes to the next person, it's a little bit stronger or a little bit different. So we get these mutations every single time. And there's some mutation charts out there on this that make this really scary. Um, so by slowing the rate of the transmission, getting that number from three to one or less than one, then that gives our medical community time. And time is what they really need. It gives them time to build ventilators. It gives them time to uh, work on a cure or a vaccine for it. Uh, it. It gives them time to take care of the people um, and one of the things that we've, we've heard about is this flattening the curve you know the average number of people that are in the hospital needs to be what the what the system can handle what the hospital medical care system can handle and one of the problems that we've really got is is if we go above that it's called the collateral damage and those are the people that have normal everyday problems that the healthcare system was supporting um, before the coronavirus came around. And what happens to them? What happens to the people that have heart attacks or get injured or have other medical emergencies? They may not be able to get an ICU bed. They may not be able to get the support. It might take an hour when you have a heart attack to get an ambulance versus eight minutes. Uh, and even eight minutes is a long time in some cases, right? So we may have our ICUs full for months, and that's a that's a real problem. So flattening the curve isn't enough. Um, there, you may have heard a lot of talk about herd immunity, and that is, you know, 
I get it and I fight it and my family gets a little bit of it and we all can fight it. Um, but that assumes that the virus doesn't mutate much, but we know it does. The mutation chart shows that it does change quite a bit. Um, and the, the virus has to have that mutation and it has to have lots of transmissions in order to mutate. So for its own survival, it has to do that. Um, and some of the other countries have, have implemented things that really help on slowing that down, but those don't necessarily sit well with Americans because we're kind of independent. We don't want to be tracked and South Korea was tracking individuals. When a person got it, they knew who they had been in contact with. They tracked the people that they were in contact with. They had all this tracking, so they were able to control the spread of the virus and get that transmission rate down to less than one. So that's really the important thing that we've got to know about all of this is get the transmission rate down. Don't congregate. You know, Joan and I went to the store the other day and I kind of felt guilty that two of us went. You know, should there be two of us out there when one of us could do the grocery shopping? We didn't have that much stuff to do. So anyhow, really think about that. Keep the transmission rate down. Keep your hands clean. Buy hand lotion. That's going to be the next run. We're going to get over the toilet paper problem. We're going to get over the rice and flour problem. Get hand lotion. <laughs> Maybe that's a joke. Maybe not. Who knows? So anyhow, uh, that's my list of things for today. Uh, so prevent mutation, prevent the transmission rate. Sorry this is a little bit longer than usual. It's a really hard um, topic. I will put a link to the paper that I'm referring to down in the comments so that you can see it and read it for yourself when you're stuck at home, really bored, looking for some really, I think, complicated numbers on what all of this means. So anyhow, hang in there. We'll talk to you another time. Bye.